So the sponsor of today's video is Skillshare, and this is really great timing because this will get you your introduction into Python for my upcoming videos, where I'll be teaching you how to create your own AI or train your own AI and set up the environments in order to get cracking at it. Now you will need some basic Python in order to get going, creating your reward systems once I start the tutorial. And not only that, the first 1000 signups that use the links below will get a free premium membership. And that will open you to so many other classes. You have so many things to go through. We have web development, applied control systems for engineering, speed controllers, so many crazy cool things, social media stuff, photography things that I'm just barely scratching the surface. So make sure you check the links down below. And again, huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the video. What is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be creating a FPV on a budget list video. So this is where I go through the cheapest components that are recommended and possibly anything cheaper than that you should possibly avoid. Now I've handpicked these because I've have experience with these and they are from well-known companies. And everything you see here will be linked down below in the order and also separated uh, so you could find whatever you need. And also, if something is not on sale, I'll have a 7% coupon for you, which you could use in order to get 7% off, which should help you save a bit more money. So let's get started here. So some of the things we're going to cover are stacks, which means a flight control and ESC together. Also flight controllers, also ESCs, also video transmitters, goggles, and also some tools. So and some motors as well. So first of all, we're going to start off with the stacks, which means both ESC and the flight controller together. Now, the first one we have here is a Mamba F405 Mini. Now, I don't recommend you put this on a big five inch quadcopter. You want to go with like a three inch 4S maximum. Now, this thing only takes 4S maximum, so you got to keep that in mind. So this stack here, you would purchase for a smaller drone. You could probably get away with using it on a five inch, but highly not recommended in my opinion. And it is a maximum of 4S voltage. So this is the first on the list for 38 bucks. You get both the flight controller and the ESC, which is really, really nice. Now, if we move down the line, we have this one. Now this one is meant for five inch quadcopters or anything below if you want as well. Now this ESC is rated up to a 40 amp maximum. Now it is somewhat noisy, so they do provide you with this capacitor, which you can install into the ESC and have it perform very well. I have this on one of my budget bills and I still use it to this day and it's working out great, but make sure you add that Loisar capacitor. So this one, you actually get a full fledged five inch ESC with a full fledged flight controller for 45 bucks which is really, really great. And this is, I think, a currently a sale. It's usually, I think, around 55 bucks or something like that. So it's a really good time to go purchase one. Now, the next stack over here, this one is slightly better than the previous one. This is the iFlight Sucks XE. It still has somewhat noisy ESCs, and uh, it's for 56 bucks. So this is $11 or 12 bucks more expensive here, but it is also a really great one. You get both the ESC and the flight controller uh, with the connector, so you don't have to worry about that. And it comes with a lot of really nice hardware. You see the rubber grommets and everything, so it's a really nice package, but definitely add that capacitor that's provided because uh, this ESC is still not the top top, but it's not the worst and it'll get you going. And I also have it on a budget build that I fly daily. Now, out of all of the budget ones, this is the one that I most recommend or the one that I highly recommend for a couple reasons. The ESC that comes with this stack is absolutely insane. This is by far one of the best budget ESCs that also comes with this stack. So it is slightly more expensive at 60 bucks, but you will have peace of mind since this is 50 amp capable and up to 6S voltage. And the ESC is an absolute beast. I have three of those actually. I still have one more that I want to build. And I highly recommend uh, this stack right here, in my opinion, because uh, from the noise testing, I do noise testing on the channel if you're new here, uh, this is a really great option uh, for you if you have a high demanding uh, setup with really demanding motors. So this will do 4S, 5S, 6S, whatever you want, just fine. So this is the one that I most recommend as a budget or even somewhat premium-ish, if you might say, because the ESC is really that good, actually. So this is a good one as well. Now we're going to move on to the flight controllers. There's only one really in the market. This is by far the most bang for the buck you could ever purchase in a flight controller. And it is cheaper than most other ones out there. And you might say, why is that? Well, 22 bucks, what does it get you? You just get a flight controller here. 
It takes battery voltage input, which is really great. It also has a nine volt regulator. So what's really nice with this is you can either go the HD route or you could go to the analog route and still have the benefits of that nine volt regulator to give you clean video footage on a normal analog video transmitter. This is by far the best deal you could possibly purchase online for a flight controller. It is a F4 flight controller, but that's totally fine. We really don't need F7s just yet. So this is a really great one in my opinion, and I am currently using it. So now we're gonna jump into ESCs. Now, if you're new here, I recommend you buy a stack because routing the connection between two different brand ESC, like an ESC from one brand and a flight controller from another brand could be somewhat complicated for a beginner. Now, if you're not a beginner, you want, we might want to take a look at this. Now, the T-Motor Velox V45 amp. This is the most bang for your buck ESC out there. I haven't noise tested it, but looking on the board and I've used one, I've used the 50 amp, 55 amp variant, uh, but not noise tested yet. I still have one on the way. Now, for 35 bucks, you get so much from this ESC. You get a fat heat sink. You get a lot of filtration. We can actually see the filtration in there. And you also get a 10 volt regulator. And I haven't heard one bad thing about them just yet, which is really nice. I haven't tested this, but this is an insane deal if it works as advertised. Plus T-Motor is a well-known brand. Now the next one is the iFlight Sucks XE 45 amp. This came with the previous stack that we looked at it. It's not the best ESC, but it is a good ESC uh, with the right setup. So um, I still think so this is very difficult, but I still think the Velox would outperform the iFlight here, but I could be wrong. So this is my personal opinion right now. Don't take that as hard concrete words. So the next one over is the Mamba F50 amp. Now this is the stack that I was recommending. This is an insane ESC. I've used it, I've tested it, I've noise tested it. The filtration's unbelievable. Uh, just everything about it is really nice. Now there is a slightly more expensive one that comes with a heat sink. And um, obviously you get better heat dissipation, but at the end of the day, it's not really a big problem because I used this exact one as well. One of my builds without the heat sink, absolute beast, highly recommended. 41 bucks, 42 bucks. And if you go anything above that, mostly they're all over 50, 50, 60. And some of the 50 or 60, $70 ESCs can't even perform as good as this one. So you gotta keep that in mind also. This is a really proper budget setup right here. So now we're gonna move to video transmitters. Um, there's one really cheap one that I usually use most of the time and I've had no problems and it outputs very good uh, video. However, if you're racing, I wouldn't go this one. I wouldn't go with this one because I don't think it outputs such low milliwatts as it's stating. I think it outputs actually more than what it's stating here. But in my bando where I usually fly, this been this has been an absolute beast and it is 15 bucks only. So this is a really nice budget option. The next options that I'd highly recommend are the Rush Tank video transmitter. Any of them that you pick up are going to perform really, really great. So this is another one down there. Basically, we're taking a look at two video transmitters. This is the one I have the most experience with uh, the budget line, and I find it to perform very, very well. So next we're gonna jump into motors. There's really three, four budget range motors, but two really in my opinion from testing. Now you could go racer star route. There's only one variant that I really prefer. You've probably seen it on many of my build, but if you wanna go a little bit higher end, this would be the two budget motors. You have the Emax Eco 2s. They come in different sizes and flavors, and you have the iFlight Shing E's. Uh, make sure it has the E because that's the budget one. Those are the cheaper ones. Uh, so those will perform just about as good as any high performance motor, except you might, if you use them for so long, maybe the bearings might go out. But currently, um, you have to use it for quite a bit. But more than likely, you'll probably end up breaking a motor before the bearings go out anyways. So these two are really good options. I personally prefer the Emax Ecos. Uh, I've been testing them actually quite a lot on this channel. I've got received a bunch of them, and they seem to perform quite quite well actually uh, in older sizes they have the 2306 they have 2207 so you decide there what you want as you can tell you have different uh, variants i personally prefer the 2306 1900 kv and the 1700 kv those are really uh nice uh, motors in my opinion 2207 very powerful you can feel the little the, the torque range is a little bit different we'll get into that later on but it's up to you where you want to go you can go 4s or you can do 6s those two are success this is a 4s here same thing here, we have uh, these two right there it would be 6S and this would be a 4S build. And iFly also has the 2207 and a 2306 variant. So you can go ahead and check the links down below for that. 
Now, goggles. I don't recommend if you're not getting a proper goggle that's above 200 bucks, then the only two goggles you should really be looking at, uh, at least from my experience, are the EV800s and the EV800Ds. You shouldn't go any cheaper or anything actually higher unless you go to the high end, if that makes sense. So these are like the main two goggles that everyone would agree with and I personally agree with. They're really nice. Now let's talk a little bit about the difference here. The $60 one, you don't get DVR, which means you can't record on the SD card. You only get one receiver inside and that's about it really. And uh, the faceplate actually pops off and becomes a screen and you could always put it back on the goggle, which is really nice, especially in the future when you just want to hand over the screen to somebody to watch you when you get your proper goggle. Now, when we move to the 800Ds here, they're a little bit more expensive, but definitely worth it. You get two receivers inside, so you get better uh, coverage, if you might say. And you also have the option to record on the SD card. You can plug in SD card, press record, record your flight, share it with your friends. Or if you ever lose a quadcopter, you could actually go back and watch the footage where you fell and hopefully help you find your quadcopter. So this is the top tier of the budget. I mean, there's only two really in the budget range and those two would be it. And I don't think anything else would be really great. Currently, we haven't seen anything or I haven't tested anything either. And check the comments down below. I'm sure a lot of people will speak very highly of these two. Now we're gonna cover tools. I only have two tools that I'd really recommend currently. These, if you're new, you should definitely pick up some of these hex drivers. And why is that? One, their quality is really great. I actually have these also. I've been using them quite a lot. Um, if you work with frames and you end up stripping a screw, because if you have really crappy Ellen keys or hex drivers, if you strip a screw, sometimes you could ruin your whole quadcopter, your whole frame at least. If you're unable to get that screw back out and the arm is just loose and you won't be able to fly it because it'll choose vibrations and it's just stuck and it's an absolute nightmare. So it's highly recommended to just invest in just some hex screws. All you need is these three, uh, all you need is these four sizes actually, which is a 1.5, 2, 2.5 and 3 millimeter. We usually just use 1.5 to 2.5 millimeter. That's what we usually use in this hobby. It's really rare, really rare to get anything different than that. Uh, 2.5, usually some motors you take 2.5 millimeter screws. Uh, usually everything is two millimeter screws on the frame almost all the time and also motors. And 1.5 usually for like that camera screw or smaller quadcopters. That's the standard for the drone hobby. So this will do everything you need it to do. And everything is usually a hex screw. Next one over is this soldering iron, which I received quite a while ago now. And it is my main soldering iron. The power delivery is absolutely insane. The latest builds I have built on the channel was with this one. And it takes such tiny footprint, it's insane. And that's the reason why I keep it next to me. I have a bunch of rework stations, really expensive ones. But I've just been using this one. If you're just not, if you're soldering... Um, if you're building a quadcopter and you don't need a rework station, this is an absolute beast. It's right there next to me. I quickly grab it. Takes very small footprint. Heats up quickly. Heat heat transfers really great, and it's 37 bucks, and you can't really beat that. And uh, it's really nice actually. And well, that's it, guys. Everything is linked down below. If you could check those out, those greatly support the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.